Continuing with the draft talk, though, um, a majority of people are saying Paris Johnson. Like that's what I've been hearing is Paris Johnson Bears at nine if they don't trade up. You know, it's really interesting, man. Because the closer it gets, you know, uh, the more the more hype there is, obviously. And there's just so many different paths and possibilities that could play out. And with my conversation with David in the other, like I did with the other video, uh, one of the things we talked about is the narrative of Ryan Pulse is the value, the value pick. Well, how much value do you really get from picking, you know, a running back or wide receiver at pick nine versus picking a defensive or offensive lineman? And, you know, his opinion on it was the safe pick, like the safety net pick is Peter Skaronsky, which I understand, right? Like, yeah. no matter what, you'll find a place for that guy on the offensive line and he'll be there for years and years to come. That's big. Uh, it's, the GM hit rate is not very high. You know, if GMs hit 50% or more, they're good GMs. So I thought Johnson was Paris Johnson was a safer pick because Skaronsky had shorter arms and a lot of successful offensive tackles like have long, arms longer than 34 inches and Skaronsky had slightly shorter than 34 inches. That's what all the analytical nerds say. Right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, all that stuff only affects the draft, really. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because you find outliers out of those numbers all the time that seem to transcend what makes sense. I mean, that's why Russell Wilson wanted to be in a third round pick because, you know, he's too small and his hands are small or something. And mm -hmm. that's why guys like Mitch Trubisky wind up being the second overall pick because they're the perfect size and they got all the physical traits and this and that. So you got, you got to judge them by something. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, when you watch him, the kid can play, you know, no matter how long his arms are, like the kid can play. And that's why I said, um, you'll find a place on the line for him. If you draft him, whatever team has him, uh, barring, you know, any injury, because the injury is always unforeseen. You, nobody could really predict that. But um, as long as he's able to stay healthy, he's going to be a damn good football player. Paris Johnson's who I would want to draft, though, over Skaronsky, me personally. Um, that guy looks like the mad dog to me. Uh, it looks like he's got, got the drive. He's got the measurables. Scary. For example, when you take his combine tape and compare it to last year's tackles, that were coming mm -hmm. out of the draft. Oh, it's a mm -hmm. night and day difference. Like this yeah. guy, this guy moves. You know, he's moves. He's big. Um, I like him. I would be totally happy with drafting Paris Johnson Jr. at pick nine. What you have to start to consider is when you get to pick nine, what has happened up to that point? Like, is there still another quarterback available? Is is Anthony Richardson available? Because if he is. Well, guess what? Someone's going to uh, want to trade for him for sure, yeah. Yeah, somebody may want to trade up and, and, and get that guy, and that might allow you to just drop back just a couple spots. Like, think about it. Like, Houston Houston picks number 12, right? Mm -hmm. So if, um, if Houston is willing to just trade up to nine, and you're able to drop back three spots, and, you know, Skaronsky and Paris Johnson Jr. are available at pick nine, you'll most likely get one of those two guys at pick 12, Right? Yeah. Um, which of our offensive tackles do you like least? Um, Braxton Jones or Larry Borum? Larry Borum, for sure. Um, you dislike him? Yes, I dislike Larry Borum. I think the right tackle spot is the spot to fix. Uh, I was looking at the PFF grades, and Larry Borum was actually graded pretty well for his last two games at right tackle, including in pass protection. So... He was only moved inside out of necessity uh, to play at guard when we were really thin there, and we just needed someone with experience there, you know? I think the Bears trust uh, him uh, to be able to play multiple positions. Maybe they just draft a backup uh, tackle in the third round like Blake Fr Freeland, and I really like Blake Freeland. Um, he's out of BYU, and um, he has more than all the physical ta uh, measurables. He's like six foot five fast, rangy with his kick steps to the side, and really strong. He's never been, like, defeated or outmatched in strength, so I would like that guy. Because Ryan Poles was an offensive lineman, because he did get uh, Braxton Jones last year in the fifth round, meanwhile the first the top three tackles all graded lower than him, and mm -hmm. two of them didn't even play the whole season. Meanwhile, Braxton Jones was the only offensive player we had that played every single snap. So, you know, Ryan Poles could definitely ha hang his hat on that pick for sure. And that might boost his confidence to um, to trust his evaluation of mm -hmm. offensive linemen mm -hmm. and go for a later round pick. Um, I've thought about that because in that case, you could go defensive back. You could go d defensive line. I mean, if Jalen Carter's there at night, 
right? Like, mm-hmm. if, if Jalen Carter's there at nine, you take Jalen Carter. 